Hello everyone, welcome back to Epifile Lab and you are watching Full Stack Laravel VJS Application Development Tutorial Series. In our last video, I showed you how we can install Editor.js and using our project. And now in this video, I have already done some little CSS uh, tweaks so that we can make uh, the Editor.js looks like a little bit in our branding. So here you go, this is the Editor.js and then we have uh, a test sample input that says title and we have taken uh, 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 we had we have make it uh, as if it is uh, an IVO input. So here's the CSS I have done here. Okay, and I take a class blog editor, and then I just take a sample input field. So here you go, the blog editor uh, uh, CSS, and that's all I did. Okay, now let's move on and create uh, the blog. Okay, and in the next video I will show you some more stuff uh, on creating the blog and editing the blog because those stuff are really really important you should learn and you will learn something new as well as a Laravel developer okay so let's take with the um, uh, stick with me and you will see something very uh, interesting okay okay that's cool now let's go ahead and uh, check our model check what we have uh, in our database and make a form so that we can take uh, correct data so it says blocks table and blog has title post and this is actually uh, you can save it as a plain uh, converted a converted text but I think I will not do that and you can keep the post excerpts again uh, this is completely something depends on you uh, whether you want to uh, change the text or you want to okay there's something uh, some concept I would like to clear with you because since the editor just uh, just gives you some uh, cool JSON data, right? So if we, if I do the console and hit on save, you see we get some blocks, and this is all we need. Okay, so these blocks are really important. And what we, we what we can do is we can uh, do two way. So one way is that we can save this um, data, uh, save this JSON data as uh, as a converted string. So we can convert all this string. Um, before we save it into the database so it will be like for example let's say uh, let's say it says type text and data is this one so what we can do is we can take this data okay we can take this data and we can say okay if uh, if it is type equal equal paragraph or p whatever it is then we can say hmm give me p make a tag of p blah 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 okay so we can uh, render the HTML dynamically. So we have two ways: um, save the read and do it in write, okay, or uh, save the write, do it in read, uh, do it in read. So this is a very important concept. It might not be so much of uh, uh, important in depth, but it will be really important as soon as you uh, start developing bigger application, enterprise application. So you have to know how heavy your read and how heavy is your write, okay. So in this case. Uh, let me tell you what is read and write, okay? So you have to understand this is a basic concept of uh, any development. So you have to know those kind of stuff. So we have to see, okay, uh, our read and write, which is uh, which is going to happen a lot of times, okay? So for example, let's say you write an article. Uh, uh, the right uh, the right time of an article is uh, a kind of constant. So let's say you write an article. One article uh, is written only once right so uh, in in best case scenario in best case in best case so what we do is uh, we write one article one time okay so since we are one admin so we write one article one time that's the only write time yes we can write the same article multiple time when we do edit okay when we do edit that's okay it's uh it will be a rare, rare cases so it's uh, in worst case scenario let's say you edit this article multiple times let's say it's up to 10 okay but what is the read time of this same article it's actually uh, equals to the number of page loads page loads in your blog okay so that means let's say that you write an article here and then you publish it in your website okay and then uh, if someone uh, load that page this is one read if any other person load it it's two if the same person load it multiple time multiple time in the same web page so that I mean the read time of this blog is uh, a lot of times right so uh, we, as you can uh, see that our read is heavy uh, compared to our write so that mean we have to optimize our read 
uh, then right. Okay, so let's see what is the optimization things we really need to care about. So here we can see that our read is, uh, uh, since this data is JSON data, so what we have to do is we have to uh, convert uh, this JSON data to some real HTML data, okay? So we have to uh, convert this into HTML before we actually uh, render it into our blog pages, okay? Before we actually show it. Or what option do we have, okay? So we have option this, a read optimization and write optimization. So let's say what are our options. So uh, let's see uh, what optimization we have. If we say, okay, read optimization, this is the read optimization if we do this way this will be the read optimization so convert this json data to some real html before even saving the data inside uh, saving data into the database okay so that mean we will not be the, uh, dependent on the json data we will instead uh, convert it and we will st actually store the real um HTML in, in, inside the uh, inside the database. Okay, this is the read optimization, but it is not a write optimization. Be simply why? Because we will have to do the calculation, we have to do the mapping, we have to do the looping, everything uh, in this JSON data and format this HTML. Okay, so this is called uh, uh, this is known as uh, not write optimization. Okay, we are not optimizing the write. We are doing all of our calculation at run time, at right uh, right time. Okay, and we are not doing any calculation on read time okay so this is called read optimization now what do we, what do you have uh, other what what is the other option other option is just call is write optimization so what what does that mean that means is that uh, do not convert anything uh, while saving the data instead calculate and format JSON data to HTML when someone visit the website, okay? So that is the uh, other option and you can clearly see which one is going to be really optimized, okay? And also we will introduce a real disk caching uh, uh, just at the EP or to the end of this uh, series. We will use a real disk cache mechanism so that we can uh, do more optimization in our data so that we don't have to hit the database each time we have a block, okay? So we just will read uh, return the data right from our Redis server, uh, Redis, okay? So it will be really extremely buzzing fast uh, block system, okay? So yeah, uh, so what you suggest based on that is that I believe this is uh, we should do uh, read optimization. Saying the read optimization will be uh, very much it will be it will f uh, uh, have a lot of impact. So we don't have to calculate. So this knowledge you can use somewhere else. Like for example, if you have a, a social network task to develop, so social network. So let's say you want to develop a social network website then what do you have to do? For example, you have a feed, okay? And you have to show the feed, okay? So in that case, uh, in that case, you have to optimize whether the read, uh, you have to consider, uh, should you do the read optimization or the write optimization? Because you have to do a lot of calculation when you return the feed and or you, you have to do some write optimization when you write something. For example, if you write some um, let's say status so the Facebook or any other social network can do a read or write optimization or they can do the com uh, they can do com uh, both depending on uh, on which one is feasible for them so let's say I'm giving you some example for uh, for this so that you can know how this enterprise system works and how and when uh, you can make system better okay so what happens in a feed okay in, in a feed or in a social network website if you go there you will see a feed has to come up uh, from your friends so that uh, <clears throat> for example if uh, if your friend does something so we have to calculate how many how many friends do I have then what are the activities of my friends have done and I do I will have to do all those uh, optimization stuff and then calculate what should be my feed just to show those data okay so that is um, not optimized for read okay this is uh, okay and it is optimized for write because the write doesn't do any calculation so wherever the calculation is made is not optimized Okay, if you can get the desired data without having much heavy calculations or any calculations, 
this is uh, not optimized at all. If you can get the data without any calculations, as little as low, then it will called an optimized, okay? Can be read and write. So <clears throat> there are many ways to get the feed, okay? If you want, if you want to avoid the calculation uh, when returning a feed of a user, you can simply calculate those things in right time. When someone insert the status, you can calculate it, and you can uh, take this data into the other friends. Uh, some way or other way, other or other way. I'm not going to explain in depth because I'm not developing a social network here. But yeah, you can do the calculation in right time and make the pure simple data packet, and those packets can only be can only be returned right away without any calculation. So it will be blazing first read optimization. Okay. So yeah, we have a small case scenario here whether what uh, should be our uh, way of doing things, but. In our database, you see we have a post, and I think now what we will be going to do, we will have another table that will save the actual JSON data for editing stuff because this one will not take any uh, string. So we have to know the original source. So in order to know the original source, we have to have a JSON data here, and then we have to save the uh, out, uh, HTML output so that we know what's going to uh, okay, so HTML outputs and then we will make the HTML output according to the designs. So we will actually convert those HTMLs, okay? Convert those JSON data into pure uh, pure HTML, okay? With CSS or other stuff, whatever it is required, all of our CSS classes. Okay, one uh, one problem this one will have is that if you in future want to do some uh, design changes or HTML changes, it's, it will not be that easy. Well, because you will have already those data inserted, okay? So you have to do one more thing is that we have to go ahead and edit and then you it can use your older our older blog, okay, because we are inserting the HTML stuff right into the system, so, okay, so if we do the front-end changes, it will not work that way, okay, so this is one uh, problem we we will face uh, ahead, okay, and I will show you uh, how to get rid of this problem as much as possible, and we'll show you, okay, okay, now let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do today, and title post, post excerpts log, okay, we don't have to do much things here, Featured image and meta descriptions views gone. Okay, we don't have much things here. So yeah, in the next video, I will sh uh, show you actually how we can convert this uh, uh, data into HTML and how we can upload image from the uh, how can uh, how we can upload the image uh, from this editor this okay and then we will see how we can convert to our desired front end okay that will be really awesome so stick with me guys and you are going to have a lot of learning materials from our youtube channels uh, and then yeah we are going to start advanced php uh, uh object oriented php so you guys know how how you can make the system much better much enterprise levels okay stick with me guys thank you for watching please share this video subscribe to our channel and join our facebook uh, group if you have any questions okay thank you guys